Hello YouTube, and welcome to yet another edition of the Mock Show. As you can see, this is gonna be a bit different. Um, yeah, filming from another location in the house. This is actually my work desk. Um, I build toys, uh, well, I make all sorts of toys here. Stuffed animals, Legos, whatever. Um, I can actually finally use it, because it's downstairs, because it's too big to stick in my room. And I can finally use it now because my psycho housemate moved out, so I don't have to worry about stuff getting stolen. Um, as for why I'm not getting this week's episode up until Saturday, well, I was out of town until Thursday, and frankly, even if I hadn't been, it was raining from Sunday until Thursday, Thursday evening to be exact. Why that matters? Well... This room is entirely sunlit right now. There are no lamps, no overheads, whatever. This is lit well enough right now at 3.46 p.m. that I can film it without any sort of lighting, which is awesome. Now, for things that are a bit darker, I will probably have to turn on a lamp, um, but it shouldn't be too bad. Um... Yeah, anyways, as for this, well, that's my shelves where I keep crap. Excuse me, supplies mainly. But anyways, um, here is Gigatron. Um, he's not a T-Rex, actually. He is a, oh, um, where was it? Uh, he's a Carcarodontosaurus. Um, because a T-Rex is actually a bit smaller than this guy. Um, and looking at this chart, I'd have to say the Carcarodontosaurus, the Giga, uh, Gigantosaurus, uh, oh, Giganotosaurus, my bad, and the T-Rex are probably all the same. It's just that fossils probably got distorted. That's my guess. Or there could be some dimorphism in there. But uh, size differences aren't that great, and the proportions are clearly... Not terribly different amongst them either. Whole other issue. Um, anyways, but for classification purposes, he's a Carcar uh, a Carcarodontosaurus. Um, as you can see, here he is next to a mini pig. If he were a T Rex, he'd be that big. So yeah. Anyways, um, yes, he does have a hip mini gun. Uh, there is not one on the other side for two reasons. One, well, for two reasons. One, this bit's broken. Two, if I were to do that, this would be on the front, and he only has a shoulder mounted of mini gun on that side. I could do one, and it'd just pop off, but neither hand is really well equipped for handling a weapon. Um, you'll see later. Anyways, uh, articulation, no, just fine. Uh, neck goes up, goes down, two ball joints. Uh, these tiny little arms, which are basically weightless. Full wrist swivel, full shoulder, big, full shoulder swivel. Legs, unfortunately, don't go up much further than that, thanks to the way it's designed. Um, they do extend fully, however, and we'll see that when I'm transforming in. Uh, tail goes up. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four. Four sets of joints there. And it even has a, well, okay, it sort of has side to side. Not really. Um, yeah. Oh, and each of his individual cozy woes and heels, too. Uh, no, no, that's just embarrassing to look at. Um, though it's not advisable due to the fact that those are actually essential to stability. So I'm just going to turn them around for you guys. Yeah. Um, he does have a couple holes here and there, like the top of the tail. And right here on the neck. Um, so, I don't know, uh, you'll notice that the hips aren't quite high up enough, 
but that's a technical issue between uh, beast mode and robot mode. Um, you'll see when I transform them, hopefully, or I'll just explain it then. Anyways. All right, and the head. Okay, never mind. It doesn't have to side to side either. Uh, to transform, pop up those little arms. Let's just kind of get in the way. And can I go this bit off? You'll see that later. Now. All right. Uh, I'll just do the shoulders this time. Um, on the last shoot, I accidentally forgot to do this. Uh, but this shoulder right here, take these bits. Oh, crap. I don't know if you all saw that. Um, I was watching that. Oh, shoot. Don't worry about that. That was just one of those jowls falling off. Um, but these bits right here are Borok legs. Right there. Man, this white is blindingly bright in the sun. But those just rotate 180. To where his arm sits like with that. And that panel likes to pop off an awful lot. Kind of irritating the whole lot. Um, just bring that up for now. Uh, lift this bit up and grab the head. Now the head's on three joints and it just gets finagled in place. Oh, oh crap. Uh, it seems I'm going to have to use some really to get some of these pieces to stay in place. Um kind of weird maybe. Anyways, we'll take these panels up. And just get those arms in there however. Um I suppose that works. Yeah that works. Anyways. Um uh, great right, well, uh, Probably what I sound like right now. Uh, right. Now, here's something that I kind of have a few issues with, but right here, turn this, and it should turn the entire shoulders. Hey, it stayed in place this time. Yay. Sorry. Um, I've been having major issues. Getting this whole thing to stay in place because uh, this piece had kept wanting to slide down, which would loosen this piece from the two bits that hold it steady. Because otherwise, this would freely rotate as well, and then the whole thing goes all screwy. <sighs> Anyways, now grab this bit that popped up and help your head in. Bring it through the arms and rotate it around. This is kind of a cheat, but this arm's so flipping heavy that it's kind of hard to pose it. And this bit right here just kind of helps to do that. Uh, now bring his hips down. And straighten the legs. Okay. I'll just bring this arm up so you can see what I'm about to do. Um, this bit right here it needs to be rotated around. It's a T. It's a T-shaped piece, but it helps. It's almost essential for him standing. Um, oh, should be done. The side cover popped up. Just the seconds. These need to be glued on. Um, if they do like to pop off. They're just held on there with an actual um oh my God, what's it called? I forget what the piece is called, but an um, actual peg. I'll just call it that for now. Converter. Um oh right, sorry. Uh this inner toe rotates back and becomes sort of a heel spur and assists this bit, but it's not the entire the most of the weight is still held up by this two T piece bit. This outer toe gets rotated back, and the middle toe actually gets pushed back a little. Not terribly much, but still some. Um, yeah. 
and then just do the same on the other side. Oh, he didn't pull this middle toe out from the last tank. Oops. Anyways, he's flipping tall. Um, and the last bit is to split the tail right there, and we got to do a climb. Well, no, not <laughs> little by any means, but right. Um, anyways, sorry, this is like take three, so I'm going to first. You should be okay, pop off. All right, and bring up that job. There he is in bot mode. And now for that bit that we popped off earlier. Um, I will mention now that he does sort of look like an evil unit with a giant paw on the head on the other hand. And my computer strange going to sleep with um, Just bring that bit up and rotate these bits around. And flip this up. Voila. Little sound wave type thing. Um, not sound wave. Oh man, brain. The little laser beak type thing. Um, really definitely not laser beak. Uh, I don't know. It could be a bird, it could be a bat. It sort of has a tail and. Um, Brad Beak, I don't know. Uh, if somebody comes up with a good name for this thing, let me know. Uh, the leg feet are on ball joints, so are the wings. And so is the head. Uh, so yeah. And the tail's on just a simple swivel. This can actually perch right on top of his gun. Or on the shoulder if the gun's down. But, uh, Anyways, as you can see, next to the minifig, he is flipping carriage. And yes, I do realize that the white is incredibly bright on my camera. Hopefully, YouTube's little corrective stuff will fix that. Anyways, on the posability. Let's go straight forward. He's got a double knee. So, so this side decides to pop off on the back cover. So his legs can go up. He can bend all the way at the knee. And his ankles can go all the way straight back. But not all the way up. Um, there is a swivel in the ankle, but it's kind of tricky. Um, and almost might as well not be there. but it, does give him a variety of poses still that uh, allows him to do a few more poses and if it weren't there at all. And I realize this probably seems kind of far away uh, with the distance between the camera and this, but I don't know. Uh, let's see if, anyways, the elbow works just fine. Um, this elbow isn't quite as good as the other one. But hey, it still works with only a, with a minimum of pieces, with less pieces than the other side. So there's that. Um, the shoulder does have pretty good articulation as long as the gun is in. It goes all the way up. And can go just as far back. Straight back, straight forward. All that fun sort of stuff. Um, neither hand's really equipped to hold a gun, like I said. Um, so that's why there's just one shoulder not the one, and just one in the beast mode. I guess it could technically be folded up like this in beast mode and pointing over his head, but I guess that would kind of be a little goofy, in my opinion. Especially if he were to aim down, he'd just be shooting himself and committing suicide. Um, right. This, although works a bit better because it can go out and in. Um, it goes up about as far as the other one does 
but oh well. Um, wrist swivel, yeah, works pretty well. Um, mouth still opens. Oh, well, the gel. Um, the velvet. I forgot about the velvet. Sorry. Uh, the head, head and neck are pretty poseable on the box because it's on three joints, and I think I may have already mentioned that. Um, well, I'm not having near as much trouble with them as I was in the last take. Uh, there was a technical issue with this whole thing right in here, but I added another uh, bushing. It's a bushing. That's what it's called. It's a, one of the axle bushings, um, which are the, those bits that go snug along the axle with the cross-shaped hole in it. It's sort of like this, except it's the one that's not a gear. And I think that would be called technically, I think that's technically a bushel. Um, I'm not a mechanic, and I'm not an engineer, so that's probably pretty clear here. Anyways, uh, Nick, very possible. Uh, sadly, it is slightly off center. Um, the way I originally wanted them to be is with the bit that the neck's attached to directly in between these two shoulder pieces. So it would also turn along with the shoulders and it would just turn in the opposite direction and be right there in the place would look really cool. Unfortunately, unfortunately, he kept getting stuck because of the, oh darn it, I have all these pieces out here and I can't find the one I'm looking for, um, because the bit that it is, just kept getting stuck between those two bits that hold the shoulders together. Um, and it, I had to force it when turning and it just made this horrible popping sound. It was like, oh crap, it's going to break, oh crap, it's going to break. And I didn't want to break it because that would have sucked. Because the piece that it's on, was on originally, was one of these, except it's the ones that have the hole right there instead of right through there. And I don't have many of those, and I don't want to break those. Anyways, um, I've gone on for 17 minutes. This is probably the shortest deck I'm going to get. So, yeah, here is Gigatron. If there's already a Gigatron, then he's Omegatron. But uh, I'll just call him Gigatron for now. Um, Gigatron and Big Geek. I don't know. Um, if you guys can come up with a better name for this thing, feel free to post it in the comments. Anyways, uh, good luck, good building, and goodbye. Have fun.